Good evening. Welcome to the March 7th edition of the Downers Grove Village Council meeting. We're glad you're with us tonight, whether here in council chambers or at home watching on TV. We have some scouts who are going to help us get started with our Pledge of Allegiance. So if you guys want to come on up. You guys ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you guys. Good job. Rosa, would you please call the roll? Mayor Barnett? Here. Commissioner Jose? Here. Commissioner Wallace? Here. Commissioner Sadowski Fugit? Here. Commissioner Colavani? Here. Commissioner Gilmartin? Here. Commissioner Glover? Here. Good to see everybody tonight. Um, before we get on to the rest of the meeting, just a couple of points about co public comment. Public comment portion of our agenda is an important, valued part of every council meeting, and we have provision, provisions for the same at each active or first reading agenda item and items not specific to an active reading or first reading a little later under the public comments portion of our meeting. Please remember, however, this is not a debate, nor is it an open question and answer session. We're counting on everyone here to treat each other with respect and treat this meeting with decorum. Those that follow our meetings will recognize that the council allows extended commentary and input from the public and seldom, if ever, cuts anyone off, often to the chagrin of others. Beyond tonight's meeting, there are a variety of additional opportunities to engage your village council, including the e-remark system, the CRC system, coffee with the council, direct email, or by phone. Every one of your council members spends time in person off this dais, making themselves available to residents and businesses across our community. Those one-on-one -on -one conversations are often the most valuable. Your council is listening. We're taking notes and considering what's said. Often, some time is needed to reflect on the comments that are presented to us. That same consideration is expected of everyone in the room. When you hear a comment with which you disagree, don't react. Just take some time to reflect on another's viewpoint and rest assured your counsel is hearing and seriously considering all comments made. If you plan to speak, please do keep the following in mind when you come to the podium. Please state your name for the record, address your comments to me as the chair of the meeting, keep comments to five minutes or less, Avoid repeating what others have already said. Please keep your comments to one visit to the podium per subject. And remember that comments are most effective when they focus on subjects within the scope of Downers Grove Village Governance. Thank you for your participation and your cooperation. Item three on our agenda is a proclamation. Some that watch our meetings and remember we have, within the last year, um, begun an extended service from the Village of Donners Grove. We hired a social worker last year. We have a social work concierge program. This person works very hard to help connect residents and members of our community to the services that they need. It also happens to be Social Work Month. Whereas the social work profession has, for decades, been dedicated to improving human well-being and enhancing the basic needs of all people, especially the most vulnerable among us working against societal injustice and advocating for the respect, dignity, and worth of all people. And whereas social workers enter the profession because they have a strong desire to help empower individuals, families, communities, and to help our nation overcome issues that prevent us from reaching our full potential. And whereas social workers positively touch the lives of millions of Americans every day and in a variety of places, including schools, hospitals, the military, child and family welfare agencies, community centers, federal, state, and local governments, businesses and foundations, and private practice. Whereas social workers are often first responders of the human condition, providing crucial support and empathy in times of crisis. Whereas social workers are the largest group of mental health care providers in the United States, working daily to help thousands of Americans overcome mental illness, such as depression and anxiety. And whereas social workers are on the front lines of our nation's opioid addiction crisis, helping people get the treatment they need and prevail over substance abuse disorders. Whereas social workers have helped people cope with death and grief and help people and communities recover from natural disasters, including hurricanes, fire, drought, and flooding. Whereas social workers have helped this nation live up to its values by advocating for equal rights for all. Whereas the social work profession is one of the fastest growing careers in the United States with over 700,000 social workers today 
and more than 60,000 social workers expected to enter the profession over the next decade. Whereas social workers have continued to push for changes that have made our society a better place to live, most notably the social safety net programs that help ameliorate poverty, hunger, and homelessness. Whereas social workers endeavor to work throughout our society to meet people where they are and to help empower people and our society to reach the goals they wish to attain. Whereas 2023 Social Work Month theme, Social Work Breaks Barriers, embodies how social workers help empower individuals, families, communities, and our society to overcome the hurdles that prevent them from achieving better well-being. Now, therefore, I, Robert T. Barnett, Mayor of the Village of Donners Grove, do hereby proclaim March 2023 as National Social Work Month in the Village of Donners Grove and encourage all residents to celebrate and support the social work profession. Dated the 7th of March, 2023, Donners Grove, Illinois. Heather, you want to come take this? Item four on our agenda tonight is minutes of previous council meetings. Is there a motion concerning such minutes? Mayor, I move that the council adopt the February 21st, 2023 regular meeting and executive session meeting minutes as presented. Second. Any comments from the council? Questions? Rose, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Commissioner Glover? Aye. Commissioner Gilmartin? Aye. Commissioner Colavaney? Aye. Commissioner sadowski fugit Aye. Mayor Barnett? Aye. That passes unanimously. Item 5 on our agenda tonight is a consent agenda. Is there a motion concerning the same? Mayor, I move that the council adopt the consent agenda as presented. Second. Rosa, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Commissioner Glover? Aye. Commissioner Gilmartin? Aye. Commissioner Colavaney? Aye. Commissioner sadowski fugit Aye. Mayor Barnett? Aye. That too passes unanimously. Item six is our active agenda. Active agenda items are items which we have discussed previously at least once and, on, and are items on which we plan to take formal action this evening. Is there a resolution of subdivision? Mayor, I move that the council adopt a resolution approving a plat of subdivision with an exception for 1300 through 1418 Butterfield as presented. Second. Are there any audience comments or questions on this agenda item? Seeing none. Council comments or questions? Rosa, please call the roll. Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Commissioner Glover? Aye. Commissioner Gilmartin? Aye. Commissioner Colvaney? Aye. Commissioner sadowski fugit Aye. Mayor Barnett? Aye. That passes unanimously. Is there an ordinance for a special use? Mayor, I move that the council adopt an ordinance authorizing a special use for 1300 through 1418 Butterfield Road to permit a restaurant with a drive through and parking variation for the Butterfield Road Plaza as presented. Second. Any comments or questions from the audience on this agenda item? Comments or questions from the council? Rosa, please call the roll. Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Commissioner Glover? Aye. Commissioner Gilmartin? Aye. Commissioner Colavaney? Aye. Commissioner sadowski fugit Aye. Mayor Barnett? Aye. That too passes unanimously. Just like that, we are on to item seven in our agenda. Item seven is our first reading. This is the portion of the meeting where we discuss for the first time or perhaps continue conversation on items which we are not planning on taking official action this evening. So with that, I'll hand it over to Manager Fieldman. Thank you, Mayor Barnett. There are two items on tonight's first reading agenda. Both are awards of contract. Here to present information on both items is our Public Works Director, Andy Sikich. Thank you, Dave. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Tonight I'll be presenting uh, two construction contracts for projects in 2023. The first one is the annual street resurfacing program, uh, which is part of our roadway maintenance program. This program also includes crack sealing and patching, which are awarded as separate contracts. The project includes over seven miles of roadway resurfacing, which can be seen on this map. 
Uh, the project was bid in February and four bids were received. R.W. Dunteman was the low bidder at $3,548,469.62. They have satisfactorily completed projects for the village in the past, including the 2021 resurfacing program. Um, and this work is scheduled to occur between April and October of this year. This slide here just shows the list of the streets that will be resurfaced, which is also uh, in the packet. So with that, I'll open it up to any questions you have. Thank you, Andy. Any comments or questions from the audience on this item? Comments or questions from the council? I'll just uh, remind everybody if you're watching at home or if you're here and you're curious about whether your street is on this list, please take a look at our website with today's meeting notes and the link to this package and you'll get a sense of what we're planning to do from a street surfacing standpoint this year. Back to you. Thank you. Moving right along. I will be on to water main contract A. Uh, so this project includes about 2,200 feet of water main replacement on Chase Avenue between Hobson Road and 63rd Street, as you can see on this map here. The project was bid in February, and 10 bids were received. Holiday Sewer and Water was the low bidder at 1,085,000, and they uh, satisfactorily completed the William Street water main improvements for us last year. This work is scheduled to occur between April and June of this year, and there will be a second project, which is contract B, that will be bid later this spring um, and hopefully constructed in the summer and fall. And with that, I'll open it up to any questions you have on this one. Thanks, Andy. Any questions from the audience? Comments? Council comments or questions? Okay, getting off easy tonight. All right, thank you. Thank you. Well, that ends our first reading tonight, Mayor. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Uh, we can go right on to the manager's report, if it's all right with you, Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, first, I'll hand it over to uh, Deputy Manager Mike Baker, who has a Civic Center project update for us. Thank you, Dave. I will begin the update with a, the latest video produced by our communications department. The new Civic Center project last September. The Civic Center will combine Village Hall, the Police Department, and School District 58 administration in a shared modern facility. Construction has progressed throughout the winter and the new building is taking shape. variety of environmentally sustainable features are proposed for the project, including enhanced mechanical systems, solar panels, green roofs, rain harvesting, rain gardens, native landscaping, permeable pavers, and bioswales. Construction is on schedule and on budget and is expected to be substantially completed by early 2024. Please visit Downers.us to learn more about the Civic Center project. So we're, we're really excited about the uh, progress of the Civic Center uh, project construction, uh, as the video so clearly indicates. Uh, this work is the product of coordinated undertaking between Leopardo Companies as construction manager and FGMA as architect. Village departments have also played key roles in the project with staff from the community development, public works, and legal departments contributing to the coordinated team effort. I'm proud to say that this team has kept the project on schedule and under budget, and we look forward to continued construction, uh, which will bring the plans more fully into reality. Thank you. All right, next, as uh, we transition into the Greenest Region Compact Report, so I'll give Mike a second to pull that up, and I'll use the time in between to remind folks that we are hosting coffee with the council this Saturday at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. at the Downers Grove Public Library. Great opportunity to interact with our team in an informal manner. Everybody is welcome. Okay. Um, the next uh, item on the agenda is a report concerning the Greenest Region Compact, um, and that is what this uh, PowerPoint will cover tonight. Um, 
if you could switch the slide. Um, this presentation consists of four sections that are shown here on the screen. Let's try this again. There we go. <laughs> now they're shown on the screen, four sections there. Um, for background, at the January 10th, 2023 meeting, the Village Council directed staff to explore joining the Greenest Region Compact and review the GRC documentation to determine the time commitment necessary to join and discuss as a council adoption of the document. The council also directed staff to prepare a report analyzing the extent to which village environmental sustainability efforts comport with the Greenest Region Compact framework. So a little bit about the Greenest Region Compact, or GRC, as I'll refer to it. The GRC leverages the strength of municipal government to build vibrant, sustainable communities across the Chicago region. To participate, municipalities adopt the GRC by a resolution and agree to achieve GRC goals in their community and in collaboration with other municipalities across the region. The foundation of the GRC is 49 high-level goals that have been reached by consensus. Not only are the goals aligned with the important local, regional, national, and global goals, but they are also broadly supported by municipal members of the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus and other allied organizations. These consensus goals guide municipal action and foster collaboration that has positive impacts on sustainability throughout our region. The GRC produced a framework which is the companion document that provides objectives, strategies, and tools to help communities address the goals. The framework is flexible, and municipalities of all sizes and resource levels can use that framework to undertake appropriate and impactful sustainable actions. The framework consists of 10 categories, and they are shown here on the screen. And the framework offers really a menu approach of options to each uh, of the GRC categories, and they can, uh, these categories in the framework can be used to construct a local sustainability plan. So let's talk about the village's sustainability efforts. Staff has prepared a report that is a preliminary assessment of the extent to which the current and recent village environmental efforts comport with the GRC framework. The assessment was summarized in three ways in each of the 10 categories in the report that's in the agenda materials. First, we did it sort of by the numbers. And in this section, the report indicates the number of GRC goals, objectives, and strategies in each of the framework categories that the village actions support. Second, we provided a summary of our action with reference to the same reference numbers that appear in that framework. Each section of the report includes a summary of the key environmental sustainability actions undertaken and that GRC framework reference number, it appears right after the action, and the number indicates the goals, objectives, and strategies that each action item supports. And finally, we uh, annotated the GRC framework document itself. Each section of the report includes an annotated framework worksheet, and each of the goals, objectives, and strategies that are supported by village actions that were identified are actually just simply highlighted in yellow in the report. Um, here are three key takeaways that staff gleaned from our report writing. First, uh, the village takes many actions in support of our own strategic goal to be a steward of environmental sustainability. In fact, when you look at the report, over 200 actions supporting sustainability are identified and summarized. They certainly support our goal that's in our long range plan of steward of environmental sustainability. And as we all know, the village does not have a formal sustainability plan or a reporting process. When we go about our sustainability efforts, they are carried out informally as the council provides policy direction and the staff undertakes daily operations uh, in support of this goal. A second key takeaway is that the village takes steps to inform the public about our efforts. Like I said, we don't have a formal reporting process, but we do take significant efforts to inform the public about the efforts that we undertake. Uh, the village has produced and published a whole bunch of short form videos. Thank you, uh, Chris and Doug from our communications team. And a lot of those short form videos highlight our sustainability efforts. So we went back and looked at our village website over the last five years, and it turns out that uh, over 60 top stories uh, related to GRC framework actions, uh, that's an average of one story <coughs> a month for the last five years. 
So we have been taking actions to try to report out on our sustainability efforts. And then the final key takeaway is that there's significant alignment between our current efforts and the GRC framework. So of those 200 uh, or so actions that are in the report, we, we found that 94% of the goals are supported by those actions, 57% of the objectives in the framework, and 51% of the GRC strategies. Um, there's real strong alignment in areas like land, water, waste and recycling, and mobility. And the alignment is not as strong in areas such as climate, energy, sustainable communities, and, and leadership. So here's a quick summary sort of by the numbers. This is a table that references the 10 categories in the highest level, the goals. And you can see this is where we achieve the highest alignment with that 94% alignment number that we mentioned earlier. But here are some options for GRC participation and the basis of the policy discussion here tonight. It's important to remember that because the GRC is not a prescriptive program and participating municipalities decide how best to implement the program, the financial um, and operational impacts are dependent on the level of effort and the level of engagement that is selected by any participating municipality. So in plain language, it's up to us and we're looking for that uh, council direction. So staff has uh, put four options here on the screen for consideration to help with the discussion. It's really a continuum from low impact to high impact uh, in terms of potential use of resources. At the low impact side, option one, no new actions would be undertaken. The village would continue to undertake our environmental sustainability efforts as we have and as shown in the report. Um, and of course, this option would have no impacts uh, operationally or otherwise. In option two, we're calling enhanced reporting. The framework of the GRC would be used as a basis for reporting on the village's sustainability efforts. Staff would identify which of the goals and objectives and strategies of the framework that we have accomplished or are pursuing. And staff would report these findings to council. Uh, this, uh, this option, if we go this way, would have very minor impacts on costs and operations because existing staff would be able to perform this work with no significant impacts. Basically, the report that we put together for tonight would just be updated on a regular basis if we pursue this option. And then under option three, options 3A and 3B, the village would use the framework to create and implement its own sustainability plan. The extent and complexity of that sustainability plan would be determined by the council. The plan could range from a very small targeted document containing only a few goals and deliverables um, but it then also could be expanded to a very large document, including all the goals, objectives, and deliverables in that GRC framework. Creating and implementing any type of sustainability plan could also include engagement of boards and commissions like the Environmental Concerns Commission um, and a greater extent of engagement with our public. Uh, any type of preparation of a sustainability plan would likely affect uh, long-term budgets and resources. So that's why you see on the screen here it says long-range plan discussion. So if the council directs us to consider preparation of a sustainability plan, we think that'd be a great uh, opportunity to include that in this summer's long-range plan discussion. So it's a lot of information we presented and just a couple of side notes. First of all, big thank you to Joshua Dowsener on our team in the manager's office who was really the lead and the architect of putting this together. He did a great job. Uh, thanks to every uh, staff member that participated. There were dozens of staff members that had to come to the table to help us uh, get a real good handle on the actions that we do take. Uh, we learned a lot. Um, really proud of the actions we take and um, nice to, to put them in a, a package report like this. So for tonight, um, policy direction we're looking for from the council is pretty simple. Uh, should we uh, put the GRC resolution on an upcoming uh, agenda for council consideration? And then more importantly, uh, really policy direction on next steps of how we would implement it if we joined. Um, you can refer to the options or just any type of policy direction that the council would be willing to give us at this point. Mayor, back Thanks, to you. Thanks, Dave. Any council comments, questions, conversations about the GRC report? Do you want to start? I mean, I'm happy to start since I'm the one that brought it forward. Uh, first, I really just want to thank all of the staff for all the work that you put into this. Um, I was so excited to see it when it went live on Friday that I actually reviewed it twice. Um, and so the depth of 
of the, the data is really exciting. Um, I know I just happened to talk to a couple of people who participated in the conversations and they were just incredibly impressed with, with the level of discourse. So thank you so much. Um, obviously I am in favor of, of joining the compact um, and I would be in favor of option 3B, which is preparing and implementing a sustainability plan with a larger scope. Um, I obviously know that we, you know, we've had this conversation before that we don't have staff expertise here, which is why we've kind of never done this before and a lot of our efforts feel a little bit piecemeal. Um, so for example, you know, we've talked a little bit about a private tree ordinance, which you see in here. Um, we've talked about our sustainability efforts with our building, but you know, not really getting beyond that, whether it be incentives for businesses or residents or whatnot. Um, and you can kind of see why, because again, we don't have that expertise. Um, obviously that will have an impact on the budget, but I think it's in the community's best interest for the long term to uh, take on some of these efforts. Um, it's obvious why we align with these goals, right? We're, we're st good stewards of our residents' finances and well-being. Um, but on kind of some of those more specific actions that would require some staff expertise, you can see those are the places where we struggle a little bit. So the municipal ordinances, um, community engagement and education, thinking about potential incentives to improve sustainability with regard to businesses and residents. You can kind of see how it plays out not having that, that staff expertise. Um, so I am definitely in favor of moving it forward with 3B. I know there's been a lot of conversation within the public about you know engaging the ECC again, and this seems like the perfect time to do that. Um, and really dedicating the resources to doing this the right way and getting the public on board. So I am in favor of looking at this from a more holistic perspective instead of just piecemeal and especially knowing that, you know, we're probably going to be looking at our comprehensive plan moving forward again. Um, it seems like the right time to take this on uh, this, up, this upcoming year. So those are my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to weigh in? Sure. Going to I, well, we're just trying to be polite, but, yeah, but I'll break that polite break and the jump right in. Um, <laughs> so I too want to thank the residents who raised and perhaps uh, re-raised the idea of us joining this, um, the Greenest Region Compact. Uh, thank you, Commissioner, for asking staff to uh, look into this, um, and obviously staff for the exhaustive look at this um, very uh, complete look at where we stand and I think that's in my opinion exactly what we were looking for. I think in as much as this report helps us evaluate w our options for joining the GRC and if so to what degree, I think it's also provided us a scorecard which I think is uh, important to what our past and current environmental efforts have done which I think ironically is part of the intent of the near 500 combined goals, strategies, and objectives um, set out by the GRC. Um, I think staff and councils, past and present, should take pride in just the sheer number of different efforts that match up with these important standards. Um, I also think uh, it's helpful to see where we have opportunity to be better, and this report clearly identifies many opportunities, uh, I think, in a pretty straightforward manner. Um, I support joining many of our neighbors uh, who have joined the GRC. Uh, I think the reporting is important uh, for the community to see in a standardized way uh, our progression, not only the snapshot today, but as we move forward, especially since it is one of our strategic goals. Um, and I think while there's opportunity at a sort of tactical level, um, I think there is a larger opportunity for us to look at a more comprehensive uh, plan, one that takes our strategic goal of sustainability and really instills that value uh, into the fabric of how we operate as a village. It's clear we have uh, a lot of those mechanics going on with our staff now, which is great to see. Um, I think a plan with a, a vision of what we want our community to look like from an environmental sustainability standpoint uh, just takes us that much further, really provides that vision. I think that's often important with such, I think, a pretty heavy lift uh, and a critical one. Um, I think this way we can look at our efforts, not just as meeting the standard, but look at 
accomplishing them because of a standard. And I think that's a key, key differentiation. But overall, I'm super encouraged by where we are. I look forward to the next steps in solidifying our commitment to sustainability. Um, and I think that would include, uh, as Commissioner Sadowski Fugit said, a, a plan uh, with a significant enough scope to have a significant impact. Thank you. Anyone else in the council? Greg, please. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> um, I think uh, Commissioner Gil Martin and Commissioner Sadowski Fugit have, have put it pretty well. Um, it's been said that it's difficult to know where you're going until you know where you've been. And I think this report is 90 pages of really good reading about where we've been over the last, I'd say, you know, probably 15 plus years. Um, and uh, it, it, what, what it really brings into specific relief is that this is part of our DNA. This is a really big part of, of what we do. Um, and, and I think it's, uh, it's a good thing to aggregate all of that information and, and really get that whole picture of what that means. Um, so I, I hope that we will continue to uh, you know, update this report on a rolling basis, uh, number one. And number two, I, I do think we should have a conversation about this in the long-range plan uh, over the summer. Um, I don't think I'd, I'm quite ready to go to option 3B yet, although you never know, maybe you could sell me on it. Um, but I, I think taking pieces of it bit by bit and saying let's focus on um, land or let's focus on climate or let's focus on you know, it, uh, one particular piece and take it piece by piece and continue to build toward uh, becoming even more sustainable uh, I think is a, a good approach. So, um, thank you Commissioner Stowski fuga for bringing it forward and um, thank you staff for the obviously exhaustive work that went into compiling all of this information um, and thank you to councils past and present uh, so I think this is a a very impressive report. Thank you. Thank you. Rich. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, some of my observations, first of all, I'd like to thank staff for a brilliant piece of work. Um, I think joining uh, GRC is a no-brainer. I think we should do that right away, regardless of what we come up with. Uh, what strikes me about uh, this report is very similar to the Human Services Commission report, where there was a lot to absorb in a short period of time. Um, I don't propose that we become weekend experts on this subject, even though there are times when we're expected um, to do that. So I think this is a perfect opportunity to uh, get more staff involvement, uh, engage the ECC. Very pleased that we are already supporting 94% uh, of the GRC goals. I'm not surprised by that. Um, I would have liked to have seen the objectives get out of the um, uh, the high 50s and to the 75, perhaps 80%. Uh, I think staff should uh, uh, even right away start looking for low-hanging fruit that we can implement uh, before we toss this off to uh, a long-range plan. So if I were to be around after May 2nd, I would say um, let's put it into a long-range plan and, um, and decide uh, how the, the ECC uh, should be valid. I mean, this is this is even a lot more meat um, than the uh, Human Services Commission until they started getting the report from the township, the county, all the social services agencies is just how big that was. But then we were able to come up with an intelligent answer, I think a common sense approach. Um, I'd like that kind of framework to apply against this as well and, uh, you know, let that bubble up over time. Um, also, you know, accountability, uh, there's self-accountability and there's accountability to uh, a group in this case if we're setting the bar um, with that kind of accountability I think that will be useful and we'll be able to um, uh, improve on what we've done in the past. Uh, thank you to um, our staff and previous consuls uh, for making this part of our, our DNA. So um, I don't know which number that puts me at but maybe you guys can figure it out. <laughs> Thanks Rich. Anyone else? Nicole? I'll go, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I'll be the last one with the unpopular opinion here. Um, this reminds me a little bit of the LEED certification discussion. Um, and so 
if for those who don't remember that or maybe you just were not paying attention during that time we decided not to do lead certification as it related to the new village hall because many of the things that we were already doing kind of fed into that and it was I felt just putting a title on something that we were already doing so I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with that here um, you know because we decide how to implement these things we're already implementing 94% of the goals I'm not entirely convinced that we couldn't continue to look at these goals objectives and strategies and implement them without simply just joining just to have a title However, it appears that most of my colleagues are incredibly supportive of this, and so um, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be the, the one person that's like, no, this is awful, because it's not. I'm just not convinced that we need to put a title on something in order to reach these goals as a village. Um, so I think the furthest that I could go is 3A. I'm definitely not at 3B, um, but that is just. That's just my opinion and how I'm seeing things. Obviously, we all know these things are incredibly important, and I'm very proud of what our village has done up until this point, and thank you so much for putting this together for us because this was a lot of work. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Danny. Yeah, so I think the fact that our a lot of the stuff that we're already doing was highlighted by this report, which was very well put together, um, and I do think that it because everything that we're already doing aligns with a lot of stuff that the GRC um, uh, outlines, it definitely supports joining it. Um, I would probably be more towards option two and putting more reports <coughs> out like this one so that the council knows, so that the public knows everything that we are doing and highlighting that on a regular <coughs> basis. Um, I would be a fan of that, but I would be open to talking about option 3A um, during long range planning as well. Thank you. Thank you. I think, Dave, what I'm hearing is that we ought to put the GRC resolution on an agenda sooner rather than later. And and I think everybody's aware that anything beyond two is really an LRP kind of discussion. And I, I think we're saying we need to have that discussion in the next LRP session. Um, the only thing I would add is, is I don't think we should ever not do at least two I, we, you know, we there was a time when we kind of did a environmental report on an annual basis. It wasn't anywhere, anything like right. this, but there was a point in time we did that. We got away from that for whatever reason. It is important, you know. Like Chris said it one way, another way. I would say it is you can't fix what you don't measure, and so it's it's important that we're measuring and we know where we are. And, and at the very least, what happens is you see year to year either regression or no advancement, and that becomes a question to ask yourselves. Um, so I, I'd like to see us put that resolution on right away and, and get this thing in, already in penciled in for an LRP discussion. But I think most importantly, from my perspective, we should never get out of the business of maintaining this report. Well, that's pretty clear policy direction. We will dock it up the GRC resolution at our next meeting, which I think is tracking for actually March 21st as we talked to the council about that this week. So a uh, GRC resolution at our next meeting, which I think is March 21st, and for sure we'll put it on the LRP, long range planning sessions as trends and issues affecting the future of the village. So we'll take Rich, this direction. Rich, you had something else? Yeah, just one quick follow up. Um, do we have to do anything special or fancy to get more recycling cans downtown? I think they, <laughs> you know, I saw that, I did see that comment. Uh, we'll take a look at that. I think some of them are out being repainted right now, actually. Yeah, get them done painting. Uh, but <laughs> yes, they have been downtown for several years. I think they're a little short and doing some maintenance on them right now, but I'll double check in a minute. We could use some more of them. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else for the manager's report? Uh, that ends the manager's report tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Item 9 is public comments. This is the portion of the meeting where we entertain public comments on items that were not on tonight's agenda, or if you want to circle back and follow up on something, that's fine as well. Please come on down to the podium. Hi there. Um, Mayor Barnett, members of the council, my name is Jody Harrop and I am on the board of Equality Downers Grove. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys today about a fabulous 
program that we are implementing right now in the community called One Book, One Town. Um, I actually have a letter uh, for each of you with information about this program. Um, Actually, there's a, each, uh, each of this, there will be a cover letter and a sample of our flyers. So take two pages. So thank you. <laughs> um, we are really, really excited about this program. Um, we are looking to draw the community together. Uh, recently, we've seen a lot of division within the community, um, some animosity. And what we're looking to do is really to promote a sense of community. Uh, and a sense of unity, the commonalities that really unite us all as human beings. So Equality Downers Grove has partnered with the Downers Grove Public Library and has chosen a book called, one, uh, called Answers in the Pages by David Levithan, uh, which is a wonderful uh, young adult novel. We wanted to make it accessible to the entire community. Uh, and what we are hoping is that the community will read this novel collectively and will come together during the week of April 10th through the 16th uh, for the One Book, One Town Week of Discussion events. Uh, we are thrilled to announce that we have gotten the author, David Levithan, to virtually appear uh, at uh, the events on uh, Monday, April 10th. Uh, he will be doing uh, an event both for teens only and an event for the adults as a book discussion group. He'll be appearing virtually um, to, to talk about this book and the themes within this book. Uh, we also have approached the businesses in downtown Downers Grove who have been wonderfully receptive and who have been thrilled um, to offer to host book discussion groups throughout the week. Uh, you can see on our webpage, actually, on eqdg.org, uh, if you look under the events, uh, the community events, you can uh, read more about it. You can see, uh, again, wonderful Wasabi has offered to host, Emmett's has offered to host, Caden's Kitchen has offered to host. Um, we, we're, we're thrilled. Um, we, as part of this event, we are also doing what's called a sip and read. We have a number of businesses in the downtown Downers uh, area, the, a couple of coffee shops and also a couple of uh, bars that have offered to have a copy of the book uh, behind their counter and somebody can borrow the book, sit, sip their coffee and read this book to then participate later uh, in a discussion group. Um, again, the purpose of this is really to unite us as a community to talk about the things that we all have in common as humans uh, that, that keep us united. Downers Grove is such a strong, dynamic community and we really want to highlight the things that bring us together. Um, and we think that, again, a book discussion is a, is a great way to do that. Um, if we think it's approachable for all members of the community. Again, that's why we chose a young adult book uh, in, in partnership with the library for this discussion. And um, we're hoping that you guys will give us your support with this initiative. Um, again, we have already launched this initiative. Uh, the library has already publicized their event. Um, and uh, we are in the process of, you, you have now a copy of the letter and a copy of our flyer that we'll be distributing uh, our, around town. So I would love to answer any questions that you might have about the program or um, anything. I'm open to any questions, you're welcome to. Um, our email is on the bottom of the letter that we sent. So again, um, please reach out, contact us with any questions about the program, any concerns, anything you'd like to do to help support this program throughout the community. And we hope we can bring Downers Grove together to read. So thank you for uh, having me today, and I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ken Lerner. I'm uh, here on behalf of the Pierce Downers Heritage Alliance. We uh, are a local volunteer group uh, dedicated to uh, promoting the uh, preservation of our natural and cultural heritage here in Downers Grove. And so uh, when uh, we were very pleased to see the Greenest Region Compact come up as an agenda item, and uh, thanks to uh, Commissioner Sadowski-Fugit for 
putting that item on the agenda and uh, making sure that uh, we get to talk about it. And, uh, and I appreciate also the thorough staff report that uh, presented so much information that uh, we all spent our weekend going through. Uh, and uh, I just want to make uh, kind of three, three simple points. Uh, the first point being that Downers Grove should adopt the GRC resolution. I think that's been shown to be pretty popular uh, here tonight. And uh, as the staff report points out, it, uh, you know, simply adopting the resolution does not obligate us to any specific implementation actions. Um, each community can you know, determine their own course for implementing what's in the GRC. And, uh, but it, nonetheless, it's, it's very important to, as a, a matter of making a statement. It says, you know, we value that uh, environmental and economic sustainability as a community in Downers Grove. Like the other, you know, 148 other communities in, in uh, the Chicago area that have already signed on and uh, like, uh, most of our neighboring communities, Lyle, Lombard, Darien, even Westmont, uh, have signed on already. So I, we shouldn't be left behind. And, and I think it makes a statement in particular to um, position us for the next generation of people coming to Downers Grove. Uh, young people, this is an important value shared by, I think, a lot of young people and the young families who are going to be the next generation, the next phase of, of Downers Grove um, there uh, we need we need to show that we that we share those values uh, in order to attract those folks I think the uh, second point we should have a sustainability plan um, again as the staff report points out we've done many many things hundreds of things um, that could be characterized as green over the years and PDHA has been up here to, to celebrate those things over the years as well. Um, but it's, it's helpful to have a plan. A plan lets you, um, you know, continue to assess your performance in this area. It uh, lets you integrate with the other plans, the comprehensive plan, the strategic plan. Um, it provides a basis for setting priorities of the things that we're not currently doing. What should we do next? What should we do? What are the most important things that we should do to expand and, and continue what we're doing? Having a plan is a way to, you know, let, let you set those priorities for the future and then, you know, work that into the, the planning and the budgeting process. Um, so, and I would also mention that, you know, the first step in any plan is to assess where you are and we have a big leg up there. That work has largely already been done. Uh, the, the staff report get, gives a pretty thorough analysis of where we are now, what we've been, you know, done up to date, which, like I say, the first step of any planning. Lastly, I, I, I would um, hope that we could revive the Environmental Commission. Uh, I think that's a very natural you know role for them to to move forward with planning and implementation of the GRC um, and I, I, I might beg to differ a little bit with the staff report in the sense that that's that's portrayed as a, a high impact option and yes of course having the ECC be operable means that you have to commit some some staff time to it um, you know but you know, we are blessed in Downers Grove to have this kind of deep well of environmental expertise that we can tap. People volunteer to serve on the commission for free. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a tremendous bargain. And, uh, you know, it would be wasteful not to take advantage of this expertise that's on offer, it seems to be, as we move forward with this process. So, I would, uh, I, I, I'll be looking forward to seeing the uh, GRC on, on the agenda uh, at a future meeting, and I hope that we can uh, move forward sooner rather than later with uh, implementation. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, Mayor, Council. Um, my name is Steve Ruffalo. I'm a longtime resident of Downers Grove. Uh, 
here tonight to uh, show my support and I'm very encouraged by your discussion earlier about joining the uh, GRC or moving forward with the potential for a resolution to join the GRC. Um, I think it's a long time coming in uh, our community. The report that was done was uh, showing a good start that our community has started. But I want to highlight that that's the community. Many of the things listed as being done by the village were community events, either by the Pierce Downer Heritage Alliance, the Park District, the school districts. I mean, we have this fabric already here in our community, and joining the GRC just highlights a leadership role that you would take to help bring that along even further, build on what we have here already. I uh, also want to encourage the council to um, probably go with option 3B and fully support the uh, re-implementation or the starting up of the Environmental Concerns Commission. Um, it's long overdue. Um, you know, that this is the kind of government we run with commissions reporting back to you all. And uh, it was just highlighted by the previous speaker. We have a great deal of uh, public expertise that is more than willing to serve on committees such as that and that would go a long way to moving us forward in meeting those sustainability roles and goals that you all talk about yet we are short to put forward a lot of effort to meet some of those even in your video that you showed earlier of the uh, you know new village hall again long time in coming but all of the sustainability options that were listed on there are said potential you know i'd like to see them all go forward um, you know, there's no reason we can't be a leader rather than a follower. Uh, we have a lot of support in the community. The fabric is here for this sort of uh, action from our residents, and uh, I hope you move forward again. I really uh, thank you for moving with uh, placing the GRC uh, resolution on a future agenda and uh, discussions that would include re-implementation of the ECC. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Marshall Schmidt. I have uh, two topics to cover. The first is the uh, GRC. Um, I do want to compliment the Council. I think joining the GRC is a, a forward-looking uh, act. There's one thing that was touched upon uh, briefly, but I did want to highlight it hasn't been emphasized, which is one value of joining the GRC is that we benefit from uh, collaboration with our neighboring communities. and we are able to share in the lessons that they learned uh, that maybe we haven't learned because we haven't had direct experience with certain aspects. So uh, I applaud the council for moving forward with the resolution. I think that makes, uh, that makes very good sense. Uh, the second topic I want to address is the one that I touched upon at the last council meeting uh, where I noted that I recently learned that the developer of the Longfellow property had created a checkerboard in a possible attempt to circumvent the zoning ordinance that required a party building on contiguous lots to consolidate properties to comply with the 75-foot lot width requirement. To understand the details and timing of these events, I asked 10 questions. In response, the village was very forthcoming, providing documents and answers to my questions. The village's response, however, was inconsistent with other information in my possession, so I asked an additional 10 questions. Uh, today, the staff responded candidly and fully to my questions and produced one additional document that corrected their answer to one of my earlier questions. The information provided by the staff does establish that before the building permits were submitted for Longfellow, the developer had in fact created at least a partial checkerboard and that the permit applications prepared for the first four houses disclosed this fact and were dated one week before the council voted to amend the ordinance, although it's unclear precisely when the uh, staff received the uh, received that information um, this information is certainly evidence that the developer understood there was at least a chance that the ordinance would be interpreted as the neighborhood was interpreting it testing that interpretation before an impartial tribunal was rendered impossible when the council amended the ordinance Precisely when the staff and the council learned of the checkerboard is unclear from the documents and the procedures that were typically followed by the staff. Determining precisely when the council learned of the checkerboard depends on the recollections of multiple people 
which given the passage of over a year makes it difficult if not impossible to determine objectively whether information was withheld from the public. That being said, I will say nothing further at this time on this issue other than to thank the staff and certain council members for sharing information, documents, and their recollections of the relevant events and to express my hope that I will have the opportunity to work with the staff and the council to ensure that there never is any question in the future as to whether all relevant information is shared with the public. Thank you very much. There are others. I'm Carol Richard, uh, and I'm glad to be here. And thank you so much for the work that's been done on the GRC issue. I appreciate it so much. And I just wanted to make one, well, two comments. First, I support what the other speakers have said fully. And I think we should belong to the GRC. And secondly, I just wanted to um, say to Commissioner Wallace that I don't look at this, and I don't think others do either, as a, t a title. But I look at it as putting another well-respected community, and, and we are, together with all those communities and people who understand there, is, there are dangers to our environment. There's damage being done by certain forces, and they understand that we know that there are things we can do to mitigate that damage, and we're determined to do it. So I just look at it as us being another strength in that group. Thanks. Other subjects not on tonight's agenda? Okay. We will continue with our agenda then. Item 10 is the mayor's report. Um, I just had a little continuation on tonight's environmental theme, if you will. Um, one of our subjects that, of course, is always in front of us, has been through the years, is trees and Downers Grove. And the value of trees from stormwater to air quality to soil control, energy consumption, property values, mental well-being is all, it's all very well known. The village has been a tree city USA community for nearly 40 years, but still, some trees are lost every year. Sometimes they're cut down for new development. Sometimes they're a safety issue. Other times they're removed to try and prevent the spread of disease. So one might ask, is the tree city moniker just lip service? In fact, that has been asked. But it's not. A review of the history of our community, including many photographs and subdivision descriptions from our past, makes clear the population of trees is growing across our community, and that's a good thing. I was at home thinking about this, and I, many of you will recognize this book. Um, and a couple of things I thought were interesting. One, Greg was giving me a hard time about holding class tonight, and Nicole was offering to hold the book, which we're not going to do. <laughs> I'll go much faster than that. Um, but it talks specifically about the area to, of Downers Grove, and, and one of the descriptions of it is it's a large prairie that stretches three miles to the north, five miles to the south, and three miles to the west. If you look back through page after page, it talks about the farming that was done, the cattle that were raised, the fact that it was mostly scrub but for the grove itself. Um, there's an interesting advertisement, which I'm not finding, but the Prince subdivision interestingly, in its advertisement specifically mentioned that they would plant trees in each yard for the, for the people that were buying the homes. Um, if you look at much of the south end of town, there are many people, I think, in this room who remember a lot of that area as actually being farmed. Many people here saw it that way. Um, that changed in the 60s and 70s. But since then, we've done a lot to improve as it relates to trees. In fact, your village plants hundreds of trees each year. We had a little bit of a slowdown during COVID, and I think the immediate year after that, we plant almost 900 trees. Um, since becoming a tree ESA community, the total number of trees on village property has gone from 10,000 to over 20,000. 
but that's just one data point and one of the things if anything that you've heard if you watch this council is we like to zero in with multiple data points and certainly just picking tree counts is not enough right a bunch of small trees versus a bunch of big trees is clearly not the same effect when you talk about shade and stormwater and energy consumption so Chicago Region Tree Initiative, which got together with the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the U.S. University of Vermont, mapped our trees, and they graded our urban canopy. And I'm happy to say that that analysis, at least the most recent one, provides additional positive news. Donner's Grove canopy has increased over the last decade and is higher than the Chicagoland average and higher than our surrounding communities, despite having similar percentages of buildings, roads, rails, and other paved surfaces. In other words, Communities much like ours, where the amount of impervious developed space is similar, generally have less canopy than our community has. Everyone mourns the loss of a tree, but taken in full context, the village of Downers Grove has an admirable record of managing its tree population and its urban canopy. Like the GRC information we've gotten this evening, as it relates to trees, there is always more that can be done, and it should always be considered. But as a community, I, I think we should be proud of our efforts. And as a council, I'm certain we remain committed to continuing them. It's another example of the good work done by not this council, not the one before it, but for 15, 20, in the case of the Tree USA, for 40 years worth of leadership that I think everybody should be proud of. And continuing to monitor, continuing to manage, continuing to, to pay attention to what we're doing is something this council is going to remain committed to. I'm convinced the next 10 will as well. It's when we talk about it being a fabric of our community, indeed it is. And I, the reason I mention this tonight is because I think it's important when we focus on trees and we focus on the environment, it's often, just like the news we watch at night, easy to focus on the loss of a tree. When the cottonwood comes down on Rogers, everybody's upset. Everybody's heartbroken. They are, even the people that took it down, believe it or not. But this community, works day in and day out in the community as was mentioned before whether it's PDHA or other groups or the village itself to improve and we recognize what those important factors are and there's lots of ample evidence so the good news is tonight we got more of it we got more details and we can keep measuring in the future that's my report for this evening council <coughs> member reports this is a portion of our meeting where we allow council members to weigh in on other events going on in the community other associations or groups they're working with if they've got any particular things they want to bring to our attention so we'll start with rich tonight uh yeah the downers grove historical society is host hosting um, a presentation on thursday evening at 6 30 at another round uh, architectural styles of downers grove and that will be followed by our 2023 20, uh, uh, annual meeting so go to uh, downersgrovehistory.org if you'd like to sign up Thanks, Rich. Leslie? Okay. Uh, first, I want to offer my congratulations to the Downers Grove North Boys basketball team on their success and good luck in the Final Four semifinals on Friday. Um, second, I want to make sure everyone knows that tickets are currently on sale for the Grove Foundation's annual Passport to Dining on Thursday, April 13th from 6 to 9 p.m. Uh, thanks to Bellied Oil Cadence, Gatos, Pierce Tavern, and Wasabi for participating. Tickets are going fast. They are $35 and can be purchased at Anderson's Bookshop and cash is easiest. Or you can find a Grove Foundation board member and we look forward to seeing everyone there. Um, finally, a reminder that we're celebrating Women's History Month and we're lucky here in Downers Grove to have a lot of women to celebrate, whether it be our former mayor, Betty Cheever, or our many female business owners in town from Adorn to Evelyn Jane to Paper Peony. A huge thanks to all the great women who are making history in our downtown. Um, but I also want to offer a real thanks and congratulations to our library and our director, Julie Milovic, and her team, which includes so many professional women who work at the library. In the last year, they've been recognized as a five-star library by Library Journal and, in fact, was in the top ten in the country. And they were named the number one library in the western suburbs by Kid List readers. And I can say that as a parent and an avid reader, we spend a lot of time there. And so to the library, I know that you all had a very difficult week last week, and I just want to offer my support and thanks to your service to the community. That's all, Mayor. Thank you. Nicole. I have no report, Mayor, but go DGN Boys Basketball. Beat Moline. <laughs> That's all, Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> Danny. No report. Thank you, Mayor. Chris. Yes, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to use this time to address um, last, week, or last meeting's uh, tabling. So... At our last meeting during our consent agenda, I asked to table the motion 
uh, for our contribution for meals to uh, meals on wheels um, and table that until uh, tonight which we we approved and I just wanted to uh, give a little explanation first of all I love seniors uh, let's just get that record straight um, thank you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're welcome um, but the, the reason that I, I did table that was because we had received a request from that organization, the DuPage Senior Citizens Council, for an increase to the contribution that uh, Downers Grove um, provides. Uh, that increase was to help offset uh, increasing costs of supporting citizens, uh, which include citizens of Downers Grove. Um, I thought it was important for us to take a look at that request just a bit more closely just to determine what, if anything, uh, more could be, could be done. Uh, for those who are not familiar with the Meals on Wheels program, this is a long-standing operation that provides meals each weekday to frail and homebound seniors across DuPage County. Uh, most of these seniors live alone. Uh, nearly all of them are at or below the poverty um, line and uh, in 2022 in Downers Grove alone Meals on Wheels invested almost three hundred thousand dollars to serve our residents so before I go any further let me simply say thank you to the DSCC for their continued support and investment in our community um, our village has had a long-standing uh, commitment to this important program However, our donation of $30,000 per year since 2016, we have donated for longer, but just looking at that, uh, starting back then it was $30,000, simply just hasn't kept up with inflation, uh, especially during the last few years of rising costs. And so this flat donation effectively lowers our support of the program each year. Um, I strongly support participation in helping this organization meet the needs of our most vulnerable residents and I think that it is important for us to evaluate our contribution and perhaps find a way to keep our commitment by means of those contributions in line with the needs as costs increase. However, after discussion with staff and some colleagues who I thank for their counsel, um, the idea of who and how we contribute is likely a broader discussion. Uh, topic one that I hope will lead our village to helping more in more ways and in ways that are accommodating and fair to our residents and all organizations who might seek our support um, since this is a policy discussion I think and decision it likely fits better in our long-range planning session I believe that will be the appropriate time uh, to raise the way we support our nonprofit organizations moving forward um, as a priority action item and I look forward to having that discussion with my fellow commissioners then. Um, I also want to congratulate the Downers Grove North Boys varsity basketball team who became super sectional champions last night. I was there. It was incredible. Um, best of luck in Champaign on Friday. We'll all be rooting for you. Go Trojans. Thank you, Chris. Frank. No report, Mayor. Thank you. I don't I gave my report, but I do want to add one thing to Commissioner Gilmartin's report. If you are new to Meals on Wheels and the DuPage Senior Citizens Council, um, there's another important benefit that they provide, which is way beyond the meals, and that simply is the connection. Um, it, the actual checking in on people is an enormous part of what they do, and it, it should not be understated. Um, how that gets funded and by who as a whole nest of conversation not for tonight but it is a very important part if you're new to the organization it, it meals on wheels can lead you to believe it's sort of limited to that and it's really not they are often the first person to recognize when there's difficulty um, and try and connect people with help they need so it's an important activity so a motion to adjourn mayor i move to adjourn second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed thank you we are adjourned good night <laughs>